World Central Kitchen is calling for an independent investigation into the deaths of seven of their workers, insisting it's the only way to know if the Israeli strike on their convoy was carried out intentionally. Israeli officials say the initial investigation shows it was a mistake that followed a misidentification at night in very complex war conditions. But World Central Kitchen's founder, Chef Jose Andres, has categorically rejected those claims, arguing they aren't credible in this day and age. Not democratic country and not military can be targeting civilians and humanitarians, especially when the technology today allows you to know things in ways not too long ago was not possible. Those drones have eyes on everything that moves in Gaza. I've been there. This is drones non-stop flying above you. It's nothing that moves that IDF doesn't know. Joining me now, NBC News and MSNBC National Security and Intelligence Analyst Mark Polymeropoulos, also former Chief of Operations in Europe and Eurasia. It's always good to see you, Mark. There's a lot to kind of unpack here. I, I want to show people again the pictures of the three cars. They're all white. And you can see the roof of one clearly marked with a WCK logo. Go. Should the IDF have been able to use those drones to see those markings? And why wouldn't that have stopped them from carrying out this attack? Well, Chris, you know, this is, uh, I might not be really popular when I say this, but but Chef Andre actually is not correct. And, and because this is a really dynamic situation, just relying on what's called ISR, drone footage, um, to, for, for such deconfliction is, is something that, you know, the, the technology is actually not there to, to understand that this was an aid convoy. What really seems to have gone wrong is first the deconfliction, um, because the the WCK folks did tell uh, uh, the IDF they were in the area, and and but really more importantly is the rules of engagement. Um, so ultimately, just relying on on drone footage on on eyes in the sky to conduct this uh, this strike seems to me um, to be really disturbing. And and frankly, it might be part of a pattern in which the Israelis are are you know shooting first and asking questions later. So I really think the investigation is going to is going to go along the rules of engagement, which. Um, to me, and I think to many others, were quite flawed, and this tragedy ensued. But the notion that the Israelis would have been able to see from the sky at night in this dynamic environment, that's not entirely accurate. I want to go back to that and some of the other things that uh, uh, Chef Andres had to say, because that wasn't his only point uh, of evidence. But let's talk about those rules of engagement. I mean, this is, and the New York Times pointed this out very clearly today, one of the best equipped, best trained militaries in the world. But do they need to tighten those rules of engagement, especially given the fact, and Benjamin Netanyahu has never wavered from this, they have a mission that prioritizes the total elimination of Hamas. Right, Chris, and I think, again, you, you, that's that's the point that I think is, is going to come out in, in the investigation. I think that's what a lot of U.S. military advisors who have been there have come back and, and said. Um, is that you know their the Israelis' toleration of civilian casualties is frankly far greater than than what, for example, the U.S. would tolerate. And so, when you have local commanders on the scene, uh, you know, allowed to take strikes based on just a visual recognition at night of something, um, this is what you're going to get. You know, so the questions I would have is, you know, were there a second set of eyes? Were there, was there any kind of red cell, uh, you know, in these in these operations rooms which authorized the strikes? And I think the answer is going to be. Going to be no, and that's really a problem. This is not the way the U.S. conducts business. For example, I have some familiarity with this. Um, accidents do happen. Terrible tragedies happen. Remember it in Kabul uh, after you know that the the terrible uh, suicide bombing that killed 13 of our service uh, men and women. We conducted a drone strike, and it was a bad strike. It killed civilians. So these things happen, but that's no excuse. Uh, the Israelis owe uh, you know the world an explanation. Um, but ultimately, this is something that uh, uh, it, it comes down to rules of engagement, deconfliction, and just a terribly flawed process. Okay, I want to play a little bit more of what Chef Andres had to say about the actual strike. They were targeted systematically, car by car. The first armored vehicle was hit. Uh, they were able to seem escape. They were able to move in the second one. Um, again, this one was hit. They were able to move in the third one. In the process, we know they were trying to call. Uh, but in the chaos of the moment, um, whatever happened, they uh, to try to be telling IDF that, that what are they doing? That Because uh, they were not successful in hitting, they keep trying. 
Uh, this happened over more than 1.5, 1.8 kilometers. So this was not just a bad luck situation where, oops, uh, we dropped the bomb in the wrong place or, or not. What does that tell you? Just those facts. And our folks have been on the ground as well. They've taken a look at those vehicles. Is this a communications problem? Jose Andres says we were in contact. They knew that we were moving. What do you make of what he says there? I think clearly there was a deconfliction error, uh, and this is on the, this is the Israelis' fault. Let's just be very clear on this. This is not the the World Central Kitchen um, or organization's fault whatsoever. But you know the strike itself, when when the, you know there was there were three vehicles, uh, one was hit, um, then others in succession. I mean these are the these are the tactics and the practices that do occur. And so you know if it was a terrorist convoy, for example, this is what you'd see an entity the Israelis would be doing. So the fact that they came around. Um, struck the first vehicle, then struck the other two in this kind of expanded one, one and a half mile uh, uh, range. That's not a surprise to me. Of course, it was a tragic error because these were not uh, Hamas terrorists in any way. They were, of course, you know, some heroic uh, aid workers, and this was just a, an awful tragedy. One thing, Chris, to, to mention, um, Israel is actually very good at this in other environments. You saw them take a strike in Damascus several days ago. Uh, in fact, in an Iranian diplomatic compound, where they had exquisite intelligence, where clearly they had, you know, human assets on the ground. Um, there was no, you know, no collateral damage whatsoever, and you know, a meticulous strike. And so that was that. That can be done. That is planned. Certainly a different area of operations. But the Israelis, you know, this is a tale of two strikes: one that was done quite, uh, quite expertly, and one that was a, really a catastrophic disaster. Hey, everyone, MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.